last week, I started working on my new Playdate game, this platforming game where you can build your own levels and share them using audio tones. This week, I worked on some general improvements to the platforming physics and some more obstacle types. First thing I wanted to do was give the player a double jump. This was relatively straightforward to add, so next I want to give the player a fast fall option. I decided just to go with a simple approach and make the gravity double when the player presses down on the D-pad. That way, they accelerate down faster. Next, there was a small issue I wanted to fix. When you bumped your head on something, the jump velocity would still be implied making you stick to the ceiling, when usually, when you bump into something, it should stop your upward momentum. That was a quick fix, just setting the vertical velocity to zero if I detect a collision from the top. I was testing the controls on the device, and I found that the player looked really small, so I decided to double the size of all the sprites, which I think makes things a lot easier to see. I decided to use this tile set and make that the art for the platforms to try and figure out an art style for the game, but to be honest, it wasn't really working out. I'm planning on spending next week trying to polish the look for the game, but in the meantime, I'll just stick to this. As a reminder, I'm planning on making the level shareable using a special audio encoding that I developed. The problem is that the data transfer speed is quite slow. I've gotten some comments and have some ideas on how to make it faster, but to be honest, I'm not sure how much faster I can make it. So if I want to allow people to make long levels that don't take forever to upload, I made the level completely flat, so each piece of data corresponds to one block in the level. Another alternative is to add some verticality, so each slice of the level has a set height, for example, five blocks high, and you can manually place blocks which gives the player some more space for creativity, but would multiply how long levels take to transfer based on the height of the level. Not sure if that's a better approach, but the current design is inspired by a jam game by Daniel Linson called Walkie Talkie. It turns messages you type into a platformer level and also features flat level creation. It somewhat alleviates the issue of restricted level design by making it so platform behavior is dependent on the surrounding elements, like how this moving platform moves based on how much space it has around it. Also, there's some built-in elevation changes, like the capital E being a lower moving platform and the hyphen being a mid-height moving platform, and lowercase and uppercase letters naturally having different heights. If you want to try that game, you can't play it as it came out five years ago and relied on a web server that has long since been shut down since it had a real-time chat system, but I was so weirdly obsessed with the game that I was determined to find a way. I went down this whole rabbit hole where I first used the Wayback Machine to find an old version of the Jam page that happened to have a Dropbox link to the source code that wasn't connected to the server and the Dropbox link happened to still be active, so I was able to download it, but it was made using GameMaker Studio, so I had to make an account to build and run the game, but then it was having some compiler issues because it was using an old version of GameMaker Studio, which I was able to manually fix, and finally, I was able to actually play the game. That was kind of a weird tangent, but anyways, let me know your thoughts on this design issue in the comments as I'm open to changing the approach based on what I read. But in the meantime, I just created a couple of obstacles with the assumption that I'm going with the original design. The first one was this moving platform that moves based on how much space it has around it. It just checks for collisions on each side to determine when to switch directions. One issue was that the player doesn't move along with the platform, so I made it so the player velocity is set to the velocity of the platform when they're standing on it. Next, I added a turret obstacle that shoots out bullets periodically at the player. This way, depending on how the level is set up, the bullets can change how the player has to maneuver around the level. When you get hit, it just resets you back to the start. I added a disappearing platform as well, which disappears after you stand on it for a bit, and reappears after a short amount of time. I'll be adding some animations to telegraph when it will disappear at some point. Next week, I'll probably work on polishing up the art a bit, and depending on how much time I have, trying to speed up the data transfer protocol and adding some more obstacles. If you don't want to miss it, scroll down and check if you're subscribed. See you next week.